tonight on The South Today. Tears were shared at the last meeting for the Dunedin City Council, with three councillors knowing they won't be back. A special guest returns to a Dunedin op shop as it celebrates an impressive milestone. And southern regions were hit with a flurry of snow, with farmers warned it's not over yet. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Simon Henderson. There was laughter and a few tears at the last meeting of the current Dunedin City Council. Three councillors are stepping down, including a former deputy mayor who has served the city for 15 years. Tears and tributes flowed for three Dunedin City councillors who decided not to stand for council this election. Doug Hall, Mike Lord and the long-serving Chris Staines all deciding to step down, attracting good wishes to send them on their way. It's been a pleasure knowing Chris and working with Chris over the nine years I've been here. Councillor Hall, what he brought to council was a very strong community focus. Uh, what you get from Councillor Hall is advice, sometimes solicited. Doug is a man after my own heart. He speaks when he has to, not just to hear his own voice. Tēnā koe, uh, Councillor Lord. Uh, we're from different sides of the political spectrum, but you were always very honest and straight up, and I really appreciate the, that. Chris Staines has been serving for about 15 years, and while he praised some councillors, he also expressed sadness at other colleagues' behaviour. During this triennium, I felt that there has been a growing disrespect shown around this table for the leadership role that we all hold. The meeting ending on a light-hearted note as Doug Hall called for votes to be recorded by division for the first time ever, with Councillor Vandevis playing to the room and voting against the motion. No, recorded please. <laughs> Ending it at times fractious three years of this council. In Dunedin, the South today. The pilot of a crashed World War II plane has finally ended his lengthy court battle, settling with the organisers of Warbirds over Wanaka. A spectator captured the moment a vintage Yak-3 aircraft crashed into a cherry picker on the 2018 Warbirds show runway. Pilot Arthur, Go Arthur Dovey was lucky to walk away from the crash, but he spent four years in the courts seeking over half a million dollars in damages. When the uninsured aircraft collided with the runway obstruction, Dovey decided to pursue the air show's ne directors for negligence. The case was finally concluded this week with an out-of-court settlement. Home to all sorts of second-hand goodies, Op Shops on St Andrew had its 50th year running this week. The store's original owner returned for the special event to celebrate the occasion in style. Bright colours and smiles all round for staff and volunteers as they commemorate Op Shop on St Andrew's 50th birthday. 99-year-old Mary Williamson reluctantly opened the shop when she was approached by Presbyterian Support Otago 50 years ago. However, the store quickly grew on her. I just loved the job and the people. They were all volunteers that came from the churches. That none of them were paid. Team leader Lucy Knott says the store has a real sense of community as people pop in to have a chat with the workers. The shop really, it's all about the, the staff, the volunteers and the customers. We are just one big group. The store is reliant on the community with almost every item donated by locals. If the donation stops, we stop, basically. Um, and the quality of donations are amazing. Everyone's celebrating the store's birthday by dressing up and enjoying a slice of cake. In Dunedin, the South Today. A crash on North Tyree Road this afternoon saw one person rushed to hospital with critical injuries. Emergency vehicles attended an accident just after noon today near Abbotsford Primary School. Police say a pedestrian was hit by a truck, with a white vehicle carrying a load of metal being investigated. A St John spokeswoman says several emergency vehicles attended as a patient was transported to hospital in a critical condition. Regions across the south received a flurry of snow today, with farmers warned of more to come. Dunedin feeling the chill as these drivers take on the downpour along Tyree Road. Other parts of the south also receiving some spring snow. These sheep bearing the cold snap as farmers are warned the wintry blast could cause issues for newly born lambs. 
Tiano escapes to the barrage, some gentle sleet falling on the town. Meanwhile, up north in Canterbury, Christchurch was also hit with heavy snow as it settled on the Little River Hills. The cold weather is expected to continue tomorrow before turning mostly fine by Friday. The agricultural industry has come a long way in the last half a century and ag researchers in Vermeer campus near Mosgill has been at the forefront of many innovations. It's been celebrating a significant milestone with a special guest dropping in for the event. A special event held late last month to celebrate 50 years of work at Invermay's deer research facility. Sir Tim Wallace has had a long-standing relationship with the programme. He pioneered live deer capture from helicopters, fittingly arriving by chopper for the occasion. But the way the public see deer has spun 180 degrees during the last 50 years, in part due to the work done at Ag Research's Invermay campus near Mosgiel. In the early 1970s, deer was a noxious animal, and that's legally described as a, an animal that should be exterminated. You know, and once the deer research program got really underway, there were a lot of staff appointments. Ken Drew was one of the co-founders of deer research at Invermay. He was instrumental, along with teams of scientists and farmers, in taking deer from nuisance to nutrition. Jamie Ward leads the deer science program and says the industry has been on board right from the start, knowing that research was important. Those 50 years of deer farming research have always involved ag research or its predecessors and the New Zealand deer industry. So essentially right from its inception, the New Zealand deer industry recognised a need to have science involved in what they were doing in, in farming a new species. Peter Fennessy worked at the campus from the mid-70s until the late 1990s. He believes the relationship between farmers and scientists was crucial. For example, the deer farmers and then the, ultimately the game industry board. And I suppose the highlight of that really was the uh, China trip in 1981. He says that trip showed the scientific team how huge the deer velvet industry was. The team admits there are challenges ahead for the sector, including addressing environmental impacts, climate change and water quality. In Dunedin, the South Today. FI Akine, still to come on the South today. A young Dunedin archer aims high while also helping develop the next generation. And New Zealand's top shearers flock to Alexandra to compete in the Merino Shearing and Wool Handling Championships. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Welcome back. 
A young Dunedin archer is shooting for a place on the national team, while also helping develop the next generation of athletes. Eyes on the bullseye. Archer Charlie Harbra is on a winning streak after scoring first place in her division every month since April in the Archery New Zealand Youth Monthly Postal Shoot Challenge. She's been fascinated by archery since discovering it during a school camp well only 11 years old. Um, I was actually slightly too young at the time, so I had to go and wait. <laughs> the 18-year-old has her sights set on competing in the under-21 women's recurve at the Archery New Zealand Outdoor National Championships in January. I am quite competitive in nature, but in this sort of thing you don't have to be competitive against others. It's very much personalised and we can shoot against previous scores we've done. She's also giving back to the sport, working as a coach as well as a youth representative on the Dunedin Archery Club Committee. I've gotten to the point where I also am the lead coach in beginners courses. Harbro is proud of being part of the Dunedin Archery Club, which was the country's first when it opened in 1938. We were the founding of archery in this country. Um, we helped build and sort of start uh, Archery New Zealand, which is our na national body. Harbra's aiming to score big when she competes in the Graham Marriott Memorial Tournament next month. In Dunedin, the South today. Top sheep shearers flocked to Alexandra to compete in the National Merino Shearing and Wool Handling Championships. The back-breaking effort of competitive sheep shearing clear to see, as Masterson's relative newcomer, Kushla Abraham, claimed New Zealand's top wool handling title. She'll be going home with a trophy and the chance to represent New Zealand at the next Trans-Tasman Champs. Meanwhile, the hotly contested open shearing title went to Australian champion Daniel McIntyre, who's looking forward to shearing at the Australian Merino at his next competition on the home ground. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A trio of Dunedin City Councillors were given send-offs at the last council meeting of the year. Op Shop on St Andrews celebrated its 50th birthday as former manager Mary Williamson returned for the occasion. And snowfall across the South is causing concern for farmers falling during the lambing season. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT with the Deputy Editor, Craig Page. Good evening, Simon. Yeah, COVID continuing to have an impact around the city. Um, Target University revealing today that the dwindling number of international students since the beginning of COVID's cost the institution $40 million. So big dollars there. Um, now borders are opening, they're expecting a bit of a bounce back for next year, but um, the yeah, Vice-Chancellor David Murdoch saying it's going to be several years before they can get back to those numbers. So. Bit of work to do there. Um, we're having also a limp, uh, look at the impact of shortage of vets around the country um, and it's impacting Dunedin as well. Two local vet cl clinics have been forced to uh, temporarily merge because of staffing shortages and um, a lot of vets around town also not taking on new clients as well. So some issues there. Uh, we're obviously looking at the weather throughout the evening as well. Expected to get a bit worse tonight so we'll have updates on our website throughout the evening and a bit of a wrap in tomorrow's paper. And on the sporting front, we continue our countdown to the Women's Rugby World Cup starting in Auckland this weekend. So, um, big day out and uh, expecting a crowd of around 40,000. So, it's going to be a huge day for the Black Ferns. So, wish them the best. Plenty in tomorrow's ODT. Thanks for that, Craig. Thank you. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoleMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, more snow showers tonight and tomorrow, with cold and strong winds easing during the day. Heading to the top of the South Island, it's fine with gusty southwesterlies and 13 up in Nelson and Greymouth tomorrow. Christchurch expecting a few showers, strong winds and a high of 7 degrees. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, more southwesterlies all the way through. Ashburton and Timaru both fine with a high of 8. Oamaru will have some cloud in 7 degrees. Heading westwards to the central lakes, the strong winds continuing. Wanaka and Queenstown both fine in 7 degrees. Alexandra also fine but a bit warmer on 8.
Heading further south, showers clearing across the board, but there are still strong south -west westerlies in Balclutha and Gore, and a high of just six. The Catlins can expect gale force winds blowing their way, a high of five. And down to the deep, deep south, snow showers tonight with strong southwesterlies in Invercargill and you're in for a brisk night going down to zero degrees. Tomorrow showers clearing and sunny periods increasing in the day with strong cold southwesterlies easing. Heading for a high of seven by Friday, becoming fine and sunny with cold southwesterlies dying out, jumping up to a high of 11 degrees. And finally heading to Dunedin, snow showers tonight as well with sour westerlies dropping down to zero degrees, snow and sleet showers clearing during the day tomorrow with gale force sour westerlies easing, just six degrees for the city. The wild weather might be over by Friday, fine and sunny with cold sour westerlies decreasing, a high of 10 degrees. And that's the news for this Wednesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite a popo. Public Interest Journalism, funded through New Zealand On Air.